Jesus. Prayers and greetings from Sabor Divine Retreat Center, Mumbai. Dear friends in Jesus, in the book of Sirach, chapter 35, verse 1, I take pleasure in three things, and they are beautiful in the sight of God and of mortals. Agreement among brothers and sisters, friendship among neighbors, and a wife and husband who live in harmony. Bible is speaking as three things which are beautiful in the sight of God and in the sight of mortals. Let us hear these things once more. I take pleasure in three things and they are beautiful in the sight of God and of mortals. Agreement among brothers and sisters, friendship among neighbors, and a wife and husband who live in harmony. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Dear friends in Jesus, Bible is giving us three important things, three beautiful things, beautiful things before the sight of God and mortals. And we know these three things are very important. Agreement among brothers and sisters and friendship among neighbors and husband and wife who live in harmony. But when we think about the methodology of the book of Sirach, or uh, the order of the book of Sirach, when we think about methodology of this person, usually what he does, usually he gives two important things first, and then he give he gives the most important thing as third. So here, uh, this uh, Bible is giving two important things first. Among agreement among brothers and sisters, really good and wonderful. And the second, friendship among neighbors, that is also wonderful. But the most important thing is this harmony. Husband and wife who live in harmony. If there is harmony in between husband and wife, that is just like a heaven. But if there is no harmony in between husband and wife, it may be just like a hell. So that's why Bible is speaking in this way. A wife and husband who live in harmony is beautiful in the sight of God and in the sight of mortals. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A few months back, I noticed a comment of a husband uh, about his wife in Facebook post. Uh, during their wedding anniversary, uh, he put a beautiful comment about his wife uh, in Facebook. Uh, it was really wonderful. And he, he, he had written in this way, uh, the unique character of the unique nature of my wife is just like salt. The unique nature of my wife is just like salt. And he is explaining in this way, then she is there in my life, I don't remember her presence. But when she is not there, Everything become tasteless. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Very beautiful comment about a wife. When she is not there, everything become tasteless. And when she is there, I don't remember her presence. Yes, that is the fact when we think about the nature of salt that is the na that is the nature of the salt unique nature of the salt and usually we take uh, food and if there is enough salt and everything we don't remember the presence of salt and we don't congratulate 
uh, our cook for making uh, good uh, food, uh, putting uh, salt and uh, many things. But if there is no salt, if there is no salt, everything becomes tasteless. Even these food, curries and everything become tasteless. And we complain about these things. Sometimes some people make many issues only because there is not enough salt. So dear friends in Jesus, this is a very beautiful comment about a wife, a husband can give about the unique nature of the presence of the wife. Yes, when she is there, usually uh, we don't remember that presence. But when she is not there, everything becomes tasteless. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That is a reality when we think about the marital life, the relationship between husband and wife. When they are sitting together, they are quarreling each other and making many issues and many problems. But one is not with uh, husband or wife, uh, they, uh, she feels loneliness, he feels loneliness and uh, become everything tasteless. That is, that is a reality and that is a fact about marital life. When we think about the marital life, really it is a plan of God and we need divine wisdom in order to understand the mysteries about this marital life. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 6 to 9, that Jesus is speaking about marital life, important points about marital life. The Bible is speaking in this way. Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 6 to 9. The Bible is speaking in this way, but from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer two, but the one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate." Very beautiful teaching of Jesus regarding the marital life. Very beautiful teaching of Jesus uh, regarding this marital life. Uh, two, three points we have to note here. First, uh, Jesus is teaching us how couples are made. How couples are made. Jesus is speaking this way. God made them male and female. God made them male and female. Adam and Eve. God created, God made them as Adam and Eve, as male and female. Dear friends in Jesus, God uh, created, God made them male and female, and Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve or not uh, Eve and Rani, or something like that. Dear friends in Jesus, God created, this is the plan of God. This is the plan of God about the marital life. God made them as male and female. So, marital relationship is between male and female. This is the plan of God. God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. So, dear friends and Jesus, in uh, our age, many people are uh, arguing for same-sex marriage and many things. But whenever we go through the Bible about the teaching of Jesus, Teaching of Jesus is this, God made them male and female. So, in a marriage, uh, a male and female, that is, that is what Bible and Jesus is teaching us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bible is speaking in this way, from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. The second 
important point we have to notice from uh, the teaching of Jesus is how this male and female are married. How these couples are married. Very beautiful explanation of Jesus. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and, and mother and be joined to his wife and he sh and two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. This is the other uh, important teaching of Jesus. For this reason, a male and female, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and, uh, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have to note, we have to notice two important things here. Leave and cleave. Bible, Jesus is te teaching in this way. A man or a woman has to leave his parents or her parents. To leave, has to leave. Or, and what they have to do and cleave to his partner, cleave to wife and cleave to husband. That is what Bible is teaching us. Leave your parents and cleave to your partner. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We, uh, we shall see once more. Bible is speaking in this way. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. This is the teaching of Jesus. Not a teaching of a husband or a wife. This is a teaching of Jesus. This is not a teaching of a priest. This is not a teaching uh, of a uh, sister. This is a teaching of Jesus. So, dear friends in Jesus, when we think about marital issues, many issues are because only because this woman, uh, this wife is not ready to leave her parents. And she is observing their uh, wishes and their commands, their laws and everything. And what happens? The frictions are there, many issues are there. In, in the same case with a man also, man is not ready. Man is not ready to leave his parents. And what happens? He is always observing uh, the laws and opinions and many things of his parents. And what happens? Many frictions and issues are there. So this is the teaching of Jesus. For this reason, man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. So dear friends and Jesus, we have to give, a husband has to give priority for his wife. A wife has to give priority for his hus her husband. That is what Jesus is teaching. But unfortunately, many wives are not able to give that priority to husband. Unfortunately, many husbands are not able to give that priority for their wives. But Jesus is teaching in this way. You have to give first importance, priority for your life partner. Of course, we should look after our parents. We should not, we should not abandon them. We should look after them. We should love them. We should give them everything, what all things they want. We should, we should give everything. We should meet their needs. But Bible is speaking in this way. Jesus is teaching in this way. After marriage, you have to give more importance for your wife or you have to give more importance for your husband. That is the plan of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Dear friends in Jesus, third important point we have to study, we have to learn from this teaching of Jesus is this was nine. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. 
Bible is speaking in this way. What God has joined together, let no one separate. In a marriage, in a sacrament, Jesus, God is joining a husband and wife. God is joining a man and woman. So, Jesus and Bible is speaking in this way. It is not judge. It is not loss. It is not other things are joining you. It is God. It is Jesus who joins you together. So, that's why Bible is speaking in this way. Uh, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Dear friends in Jesus, uh, Bible is speaking about this. We need grace in order to lead a good marital life because God has joined you. God has joined you together. God has joined you together with grace, through grace. If there is no grace of God, you cannot move. Or if there is no grace of God, you cannot live together peacefully. That is what we have to study, we have to learn from the Bible. You need much grace in your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When we think about the Holy Family, Jesus, Mother Mary and Joseph, we always pray to God that uh, kindly transform our family as holy family. Most of us pray in this way, Lord, transform our family as holy family. But in fact, when we think about the incidents happened in the uh, holy family, in the lives of these three persons, they were go they they had gone through such suffering situations and so much worries were there, anxieties were there, many issues were there, and reasons for uh, many things were there. Even though we know there were lot of struggles and many issues uh, in the uh, life of the Holy Family, we all pray to God, uh, transform our family as a holy family. Why? Because we know that even though holy family had gone through such issues and struggles, the abundance of grace was there. The abundance of grace was there. So, dear friends in Jesus, grace is a very important fact. Grace is a very important uh, matter when we think about a successful marital life. That's why we pray, transform our family also as holy family. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, dear friends in Jesus, in order to understand these things, we need divine wisdom. With our human intellect, no one can understand the depths of the marital life. Uh, if you read letter to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 32, letter to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 32, there St. Paul is speaking about marital life. St. Paul is speaking about marital life chapter 5 verse 32. After speaking about this marital life, and St. Paul is comparing this marital life just as uh, the relationship between Christ and the church. How, this, uh, how Christ uh, sacrificed his life for the church and how church is obeying and loving and this Christ. Just like that, uh, this St. Paul is explaining there. And while... Uh, he was explaining these things in verse 32. St. Paul is speaking in this way. This is a great mystery and I am applying it to Christ and the church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. St. Paul is teaching us this is a mystery. 
this is a mystery. What is a mystery? In order to understand mystery, we need divine wisdom. That's why we call it mystery. In order to understand a, a mystery, we need divine wisdom. So, if you try to understand this marital life with the human intellect only, we may not be able to understand the real depths of the marital life. And when we think about this marital life, we have to understand that the Christian marriage is a covenant, not a contract. That we have to understand. Christian marriage is, uh, is a covenant, not a contract. What is the difference between a contract and covenant? In a contract, what happens? We make, two persons make contract. If you give this much things to me, I shall also give these things. If you love me, I shall also love you. If you go after another lady, I shall also go after another man. If you do something good for me, I shall also do something good for you. That is a contract. But this is not a contract. Christian marriage is not a contract. Christian marriage is a covenant. What is the difference between a covenant and contract? Uh, we could see many covenants in Old Testament with God and Israel people. Most of the time, these people were unfaithful to God, but God was never unfaithful to the people. God was always faithful to the people. So, a covenant means to be faithful regardless of the situation. A covenant means to be faithful regardless of the situation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To be faithful regardless of the situation. A very beautiful. Very beautiful thing. That, wa that is what we see in the life of God. When we study the covenant between God and Israel people, the people were uh, unfaithful many times, but God was never unfaithful to them. God was always faithful to, uh, faithful to uh, Israel people. So, dear friends in Jesus, if we see in the secular world, secular world, husband and wives, couples are considering marriage as a contract. So, if you love me, I will also love you. If you go, go after another lady, I will also go after another uh, man. But that is not okay. That is not with uh, uh, our Christian marriage. Christian marriage is to be faithful regardless of the situation, whether your wife is going after another man or whether uh, your husband is going after another lady. You should be faithful. And to be faithful regardless of the situation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, dear friends in Jesus, it is really a mystery. And understand your marriage as a mystery, a marriage as a covenant. And love it and make sacrifice for sacrifices for this successful marital life by the grace of God. Let us close our eyes. Dear friends in Jesus, we were seeing a few important points regarding the mental life. We need grace of God in order to lead a successful marital life. We shall ask this grace from God and let us ask the intercession of Mother Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in this. Now and the of our death. Amen. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.